It's time to revisit Stillwater. I know I was just there, there, at Stillwater Brewing, but uh, I picked up three different beers, so may as well review them all. Today it will be their Inseto, which is another wild ale, but this time with Italian plums. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Chewing the Brew. This is a wonderfully sunny and dry and blue-skied afternoon in early June here in Olympia. And I have a beautiful and theoretically dry, or at least dry hopped. Pardon the camera shake. It is breezy. We'll see how much wind noise comes through on the microphone, too. I'll see if I can clean that up. Hey, okay, fun times. Anyways, beautiful outdoors means great lighting, so I don't have to use my ring light, so... That's kind of nice. I mean, I like the ring light. Ring light's nice. But uh, not having to do it means an easier setup and takedown. Anyways, so I'm going to try not to go too long-winded into explaining what all is going on with, with Stillwater. Uh, by the time this is posted, I should have already posted the Rosé Gold or the Rose Gold, which was another uh, beer in the same family of wild ales by Stillwater. Stillwater being a UK brewery that opened a U.S.-based uh, wing division at Talking Cedar Brewery, or in Talking Cedar Brewery, just a little bit south of me. And this is another of those wild ales. So this is the Inseto. It is a dry-hopped sour ale with Italian plum. I got three of these. There was the Rose Gold, or Rosé Gold. There was Inseto, and there's also one that has Sage, which... Hopefully I'll do that review as well before too much longer. I have one of those cans left, but uh, let's dive into this one. Hmm. It's such a dry beer to begin with. Like there's this really nice, um, it's like a, a dry fruity, which I suppose you'd expect considering that the addition in this is fruit. Um, as opposed to the rosé gold was uh, rose petals and hibiscus. That was more of a sweet floral. This is going to be more fruit. But it has this just really nice, like, um, cracker uh, a maltiness that's really subtle, uh, kind of there to support the the wild, the, the sourness. This, the, the, and it's, it's not a tart beer. It's just a, a sour beer. So a wild ale, a saison, uh, all in that same family. Um, the, the sour characteristics of the beer. And then this one clearly has, clearly is going in a fruitier direction than the rose gold. Yeah, maybe it's because I'm outside. There's a lot of wind blowing around, so there's not a lot of time for odors to build up. And my hands aren't clean enough to do that. It just smell like an afternoon's worth of work. <laughs> it smells good. What else can there be, right? It smells good. You're going to enjoy it, you're gonna, or you're going to drink this, you're going to think, oh, this smells good, or you're going to think it doesn't. So it smells good. Woohoo. This is very juicy. It's definitely tart. It's definitely sour. But it's juicy. And... The tartness is a little bit drying, but not too much. It's it's kind of a mouth-watering tartness, but not like an eye-watering tartness, right? We, we've talked about eye-watering beers. This is a mouth-watering beer. As I'm drinking it, I'm really reminded of tart plums. You know, low sweetness, kind of high in plum essence. Uh, and it's like the whole thing. Like, you're tasting the, the plum skin as well, which has kind of a, a funky taste, uh, which could be the funkiness of the wild ale that the plums are added to in this case. Uh, do you ever drink uh, celestial seasonings, uh, herbal teas when you were younger? My, my mom loves, loves those, loves those, loves them, loves them still. There's the zingers there. They have like lemon zinger and I think raspberry zinger. They're very fruity herbal teas. And um, they always smelt amazing and tasted like, well, like herbal tea. You always 
we uh, my brothers and I would uh kind of crack jokes that they were deceptive or defrauding. They smelt so amazing and they tasted so so. So this tastes like like one of the zinger teas smells, which is pretty good if you know what I'm talking about. Get that delicious floral, fruity, bright, tart juiciness. Um, there's very little finish. It by the time the the flavor kind of finishes with this dry the hops, the dry hops. Um, but they're they're gone really quickly. And really, you're just left with your saliva, which is great because like you're drinking and all of a sudden it's water and it's your own water, <laughs> which uh, considering my experience with Dune has all sorts of meanings, but we won't go there. Yeah, it's good. This is a very, very refreshing beer. It's not strongly carbonated. It's, I'd imagine it's spontaneously or... um. I'd imagine they did not actually put carbon dioxide in this. It's all the natural process of the fermentation that produces what head this had. And as you saw when I poured it, it had a decent amount of head, but it doesn't come across as like effervescent. It's it's just the, the juiciness of the beer is bright and it's not light. There's a lot to it, but it's all like bright and, and fruity and with this really nice uh, underlying kind of cracker malt. And then this tiny, just just really deft hint of a of a, a bitter hop finish that kind of cleanses the palate as it comes through, and then it's gone, and it's great. You're not left with anything. You're not left wondering if that was a you know really a diet soda that you didn't ask for. You're you're left with just a really nice clean mouth and wanting another sip, which means it's a winner. Anyways, this is me drinking Inseto by Stillwater Brewing a dry hopped sour ale with Italian plums and I will catch y'all on the flip side.